Hi, I'm Chef Deborah, and this is my daughter Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Today we are going to be making a basic brioche dough that we're going to turn into wonderful donuts and sticky buns and cinnamon rolls and lemon buns. So please join us today. Uh, we are from Rocus Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. You can visit us on our Facebook or Instagram pages. We also have a website at rocasbakery.com where you can find our online store, our photo gallery of all the wonderful, some of the wonderful things that we've done. We can't obviously post all the pictures of what we do, um, but also uh, it, it allows you to see all the news things that's going on in our bakery and what we're up to. So visit our online store and we do ship nationwide. So let's get to making brioche dough for our donuts. So today we're going to be starting with five cups of regular unbleached flour. It doesn't matter what brand. Don't use bread flour. We want the donuts to be tender. So if you were making the brioche dough for like bread or rolls, you would want to use a bread flour. But for the donuts, we want just regular all-purpose flour, unbleached. We have one stick or eight tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. We've got uh, one whole egg and two egg yolks. We've got two teaspoons of instant yeast. Now in the bakery, we use two different kinds of yeast. You might not have this at home, but the gold yeast is for sweet breads and the red yeast is for regular breads that you, you know, for sandwich breads and rolls. Uh, so we do use the InstaServe gold yeast for our sweet rolls. It just helps um, the bread to get a lighter lift. So you can actually find it online. Uh, so a lot of stores carry the gold yeast now. We also have a teaspoon of good vanilla. We have a tablespoon of salt. And we also use about uh, two tablespoons of dry milk powder. You can find this, you can use instant milk, uh, but it is called dry milk powder. It does, again, help to enrich the dough and give it a nice tender mouthfeel. We have a one half cup of granulated sugar and about one and a half cups of whole milk heated to just like a uh, bath water temperature, about 98 degrees, no hotter than that. We don't want to kill the yeast. So those are our ingredients. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the yeast and we're going to put it into the, the warm milk and we're just going to take a little whip and just combine both of them. And it is a y instant yeast. And you know, everybody says, well, you don't have to proof it in a liquid, but I have found that even instant yeast does not rise. Sometimes it, you might get an old batch or there might've been something wrong with the packet. So I always like to test the yeast before I put all these ingredients in and then have the yeast not work and then you have to throw it all away and start over again. So just as a matter of precaution. So as you can see, there's little bubbles in here and that's what you wanna see. So now you know the yeast is active. So you can go ahead and we can put the eggs in here and the egg yolks, the one egg and the two egg yolks. That makes for a real rich uh, dough and our teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. Again, you don't have to do this, but it just helps to combine the dough a lot faster and saves time mixing it up. So we're gonna add our sugar to our five cups of all-purpose flour. We're gonna add our one tablespoon of salt and our dry milk powder if you're using it. You don't have to use it if you can't find it. That's, that's not a problem, so don't worry about that. And so we do have a KitchenAid stand mixer here fitted with our dough hook attachment. And so we're just going to combine the dough real quick just to mix up all the ingredients. Is the flour already in there? Flour's already in there, uh-huh. With the, the water for the yeast, if you didn't have a thermometer, how, can I stick my finger in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess it would've been warmer than that. Yeah, yeah it, it's just like bath water, I mean like a yeah. baby bath water uh, okay. warm. Just, you know, it's not hot. You wouldn't want to pull your finger out of it. You really don't want it to be any more than 100 degrees, but yeah, just slightly warm to the touch. You don't okay. need to you don't need to worry about that. So we're just gonna go ahead and add our wet ingredients. And we're just gonna go ahead and let it mix until it starts to combine. And then we're gonna add, add our butter. I have cut our butter into a little more than a tablespoon chunks. We don't wanna add it all at once. Otherwise it will, um, it will take forever to incorporate. So we're just going to uh, 
help it along here real quick. I just like, we're not supposed to stick our spatula down in there, but it's on low speed and it's one of those things I've been doing so long that it's just habit. But it's almost mixed together and we're gonna start adding our butter. And I'm gonna turn the speed up just a little bit. We're going to incorporate the butter and get the dough into completely um, dough consistency and then we'll be back and I'll show you exactly what it's supposed to look like. So our dough is done and I like to finish our dough out on the counter just so that I can feel the dough. You know, yeasted doughs are living things. Uh, it's a living organism. So we want to be sure that the dough is the right texture and the right temperature and uh, all those wonderful things. So we're just going to put a little bit of flour, not much, just a little on the board. And we're going to take our little scraper and scrape the dough out. And it will be slightly sticky. This is not a bread dough. So if you've made bread dough before, that's not what this is. It is for donuts it's, or cinnamon rolls. So you can see it's a little bit sticky and it's very soft. So you can feel it, Rachel? Feel how different it is than a bread dough? Mm -hmm. Feel? It doesn't have the same like elasticity. It's not, no, we haven't developed the gluten like we would to do a window pane test where we take a chunk of dough off, we roll it, and then we start separating it and this is if you would be doing regular like loaf bread or sandwich bread. And this is called the window pane test. And you just want to slightly just keep pulling it apart to see if it's been kneaded enough. So at this point, you can start seeing the, the window pane, but you can see it's starting to tear. You see, it's not, the gluten hasn't been fully developed yet. So if you are making bread dough for bread, this would not be ready. So you would have to put it back, you would have to knead it again for probably four more minutes. Okay. But we're gonna finish this on the counter. And if you've never kneaded before, it's not hard. We just wanna fold over the bread dough, push it out like this. And this is just gonna finish giving it that silky texture that we wanna see in our donuts. And also, if I feel anything in the dough that I don't like, like it might be too wet, uh, maybe we, the flour was more hydrated than we thought, uh, we need to add a little more flour to our bench, we go ahead and do that. But this, uh, it's not sticking um, at all, so this is good to go. We, um, we measured correctly and the flour wasn't uh, too dry, so we don't want to really develop the gluten to the point where we go to the window pane test and pass it. Because these are donuts, we want them to be tender. We don't want them to be bready. So I think that's about it. So you can tell it's a really nice, beautiful, beautiful dough. It has a nice spring to it and it's nice and soft. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in a grease container. We, um, I just spray with Pam or nonstick spray. But we like these graduated uh, markers, and you can get these in. Um, you can get these online. Some stores sell them. And so we put the dough in here, and then it shows us where it uh, where it should be rising to. So we want it to rise double. So it would be two times this. So it would be up to the top number. So we cover the top with plastic. If you've watched our other episodes uh, with dough that we put it, we create a. A little proofer box in our own oven with a, a 9 by 13 pan of hot water. Just put it on the bottom rack, put this on the top rack, and uh, just let it proof. It will take probably a couple of hours to proof double. But just keep a watch on it. You don't want it to overproof. So, um, Do you turn the oven on? No, we don't turn the oven on. The, the hot water, the very hot tap water, is enough to, to keep the temperature and the humidity in the oven for the dough. Would you have to adjust for drier climates like Colorado or Arizona? Not usually because like you add more water. No, not okay. usually because uh, it's just a proofing box basically we're creating. So it's it's an enclosed environment. Mm -hmm. If you were out, it was out on the counter that might be different because okay. the air might be drier. But because it's in there in the oven, it actually is a own little box so that there's no air getting into that box. So it creates its own humidity. Okay. So it's good to go. So as soon as our dough rises, we'll be back to roll and cut and fry. See you in a few minutes. So we're back with our brioche dough and it has risen. 
punched it down a little bit and it started to rise again so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to dump this out on our board we are actually going to divide this dough in half so we're going to be making a number of different things with the dough so we're going to cut it in half here and we're going to put this over here to the side and we're going to work with this as you can see this dough is really super soft rachel okay. so after it's risen we don't want to mess with it too much but we do need a good flour underneath it and we're going to just very lightly roll it so go ahead and put more flour down on the board on the board on, or the top on the board and the top both underneath you want a good flour you don't want it to stick you can almost press it out with your hands actually because uh, it's really a soft dough go ahead go forward we want it to be about a half inch thick we don't want it to be thin otherwise we'll have skinny donuts we don't want skinny donuts that's good right there you mean donuts so, don't make us skinny donuts don't make us skinny <laughs> well my donuts do we bless all the calories out right so we just want to be sure that um, it's even so again if you're doing the whole recipe it would make probably a dozen a dozen <clears throat> donuts and this is a a good size cutter so you can use a cutter like this you can get this online this is an Ateco I find that we go through a lot of these uh, a lot we yeah we just wear them out and they break but um, you can get these online they're really cheap they're like five bucks they're, they're not expensive at all or you could use a, a biscuit cutter or a round cutter and you can use a smaller cutter you know or a, a tip off of a, an icing tip a decorating tip and cut the hole out but we're going to be doing solids because we're going to do, be doing some filled donuts as well so we're going to be doing holy donuts and solid donuts so let's do a couple of each we will right to the edge we're just going to press down even like that and then yeah mm -hmm. press down hard make sure it goes all the way through there we go and you might want to stick it in the flour there we go tap it off mm -hmm. yeah the hole came out and that's fine we want the hole the holy hole as close as we can to eat the other donuts we don't have a lot of waste mm -hmm. that'd be a good business name for donuts holy holes holy holes <laughs> yeah if you're just doing the holes and then we'll do the rest of solid. And we have uh, some baking sheets that have already had a parchment paper. And you, for this donut, for this brioche dough, you do need parchment paper. And heavily spray it, not with Pam, but with Baker's Joy or some type of spray that has flour in it. And spray it heavy because it will stick and you won't be able to get them up. So we're just going to separate them and just lay them on the, the sheet pan. You want to give them a good couple of inches apart because they will almost double in size. So you do not want to crowd them. And so we don't want to knead. We just want, let me show you how to do this. We're just going to gently just push it back together. Because this dough is so soft, we can actually re-roll this a second time. If it was any harder than that, we wouldn't be able to do that. It would make the donuts too soft, but because there is a lot of butter and I added some extra egg yolk in it, we'll be able to do that. But you'll be able to tell the difference in this dough. It's gonna, the gluten has been activated a little because we've rolled it. Right. You'll see there's a little bit more resistance to it. Oh, can yeah. you feel it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good right there. And you can just pat the rest out. Yeah. And we'll do a couple more of the solids. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do some filled donuts today. We're going to be doing a, um, we're going to do a jelly donut. We're also going to be doing pastry cream uh, filled. We're going to be doing chocolate and vanilla. And uh, so just, just fun stuff so you can see all the different types of fillings that you can make. You can find our basic vanilla pastry cream recipe on our Series 1 show on our website. Uh, look under Southern Favorites where we have our blueberry biscuits and our banana pudding. You'll find our vanilla pastry cream recipe there. So we've got our donuts cut out. And remember, 9 by 13 pan with hot, hot tap water oven is off we're going to go ahead and proof these uh, for about 20 25 minutes till they're almost doubled in size we don't want these to overproof, otherwise they'll fall when you try to fry them and you'll get a flat donut and so we'll be back in just a couple of minutes when they get done raising and we'll fry these up and glaze them for you we'll see you shortly so we're back with our raised donuts and they've raised beautifully so we've got our temperature of our oil at 360 degrees. 
Uh, we want to try and maintain it. We'll always use a thermometer because if the if it it drops below 350, uh, the donuts will absorb too much oil and they'll become kind of greasy and, and more dense. You want them to be nice and light and fluffy. So we want to maintain the oil at about 360. So adjust the, the up and down temperature of your stove top as needed. So we're going to go ahead and fry these up and we'll get back and we'll start the glazing after they cool off just in just a little bit. So we're back, our donuts have been fried. As you can see, they're fried to a nice golden brown. And just as a reminder that when you make donuts like this from scratch, especially with a brioche dough, which is heavy on the eggs and the butter, it's not gonna be like your donut shop uh, donut or Krispy Kreme if you live in the South or du even Dunkin' Donuts. Those companies use mixes and water. And, and so the, the product is completely different. So expect your donuts to look maybe a little craggy around the edges. They're not gonna necessarily be perfect. Now this dough was a little overproofed uh, doing during, during this shoot. Um, the dough was, was overproofed a little bit. And so you're gonna get more of a um, caramelization on the outside of the donut. And the inside might not be um, as light as what you would expect it to be. But if you be careful and when you're watching the dough, make sure it doesn't overproof over double uh, when, it's, when it's raising the first time, you should be good to go. Um, but these are the things that happen when you make donuts from scratch at home, especially when you're making a donut from a brioche a dough, a live dough and not a mix. Uh, mixes, you can't go wrong with them unless you burn them when you fry them. We're gonna fill uh, one of our donuts with a vanilla pastry cream and we're gonna put chocolate icing on it and basically turn it into a Boston cream donut. If you ever had Boston cream pie, this is kind of a donut take on that. We, sell, we used to sell a lot of those at the bakery store. So our vanilla pastry cream recipe, as a reminder, is on our um, Southern Sweets episode in series one, which you can find on YouTube at Chef Deborah slash Roca's Bake, backslash Ro Roca's Bakery, or on our website at rocasbakery.com. And to turn it into chocolate pastry cream, you just add four ounces of chopped, unsweetened, cho good chocolate into the warm pastry cream and let it melt. And very easy to make, so you can find that recipe uh, and that's uh, on that episode in season one. So let's go ahead and start dipping, Rachel. So we wanna dip until it, it actually comes almost to the, the bottom of the donut, but we're putting it top side down in the glaze and then lifting it up. We'll put these over here and then switch, flipping it back over. Here we go. And then we're just gonna put it on a baking sheet that has a rack on it so that it's not sitting in the glaze. Otherwise, the bottom of the donut can get soggy. For all the red, white, and blue for Veterans Day or Memorial Day, and you can do, we have all different kinds of sprinkles. You can get those at any, any store, especially during the different holidays. So you can make your donuts really festive for your family. And it's fun. The kids love to see the bright colors, especially in Halloween. And uh, just, a, just a fun thing to do for your family and friends. And you know, you can have a donut making party too and have some of your neighbors over and invite their kids. And, and everybody has one job that they have to do or one contribution to the donut party and the grown-ups are there so you know it, it can just be a fun thing to do also about this dough quick before i forget if you make the dough uh, ahead of like one day ahead of time uh, and just pat it out into a rectangle wrap it in plastic wrap and put it on a, a small sheet pan or in a bowl you can stick it in the refrigerator overnight or up to two days and roll it out the next day so that you know you can have fresh donuts in the morning but you don't have to mess with making the dough so friday afternoon make the dough stick it in the refrigerator saturday morning um, roll it out to half an inch thick, cut it and proof them. It'll take longer because the dough's chilled and the dough's, the texture of the dough will be a little bit different uh, because it's been chilled, but they will raise beautifully. And so it's a nice, easy uh, recipe to do ahead of time as well. Uh, you can also freeze the dough. Once the donuts are cut in either solid rounds or holes, you can put those on a sheet pan, cover them with plastic and freeze them. 
and then you can take them off the sheet pan and put them in a plastic bag and mark and date so you know when you made them and they'll keep up to a couple of weeks in the freezer so you can do them ahead of time and if you just want to you know make some donuts one saturday morning just bring them out and it'll take obviously a lot longer to proof and thaw but put them in your little proofer oven you you know that you turn your proofer box from your oven that you turn into and and you have donuts so just as a side note you can freeze these ahead of time as well so we're going to um, make a boston cream so we have a tip here it's called a bismarck tip uh, we have these in the bakery and this is what we use to fill our donuts with you don't have to have one but you do need something stiff to push into the donut so uh, if you have a round uh, a round tip something like that you do need or you can take a knife and cut this cut a little you know twist the knife a little bit in there you can fill it that way but we just we just stab it <laughs> usually in a couple places and just squeeze the filling in and sometimes it, it squeezes out you want to go ahead and dip that one in the chocolate honey we used to have when saturdays i would only make bombolonis on saturday which is an italian donut filled with our italian vanilla buttercream and we would sell out usually within a couple of hours we'd make i don't know how many trays of them every saturday and i'd only do them on saturdays and i deliberately had to overfill them and i'm going to show you how like this all of my customers wanted to see the bombolonis coming out looking like this because that meant there was a lot of vanilla pastry cream goodness inside of that so they were always picking out that particular one so you go ahead and glaze that with um with the vanilla glaze as you can see um, because the dough was overproofed it got a little bit craggy and that's what happens we just you know we're, we show our mistakes as well as our successes this wasn't a mistake but it was just overproofed in any event that is those are our donuts you can uh, powder these with uh, roll these in granulated sugar uh, if you want to you can fill these with jelly and roll them in sugar or dust them with powdered sugar any combination it's your donuts it's your creation it's your color palette uh, and it's a holiday event uh, so this is Chef Deborah and Rachel thanking you for joining us today for our brioche donuts uh, episode. Yes. <laughs> mm -mm, good. <laughs> Rachel's the donut queen. <laughs> is it good? Really good? Let me see. Oh yeah, it looks nice and fluffy inside, huh? So this is Chef Deborah and Rachel signing off for this episode. Bon appetit. Mm -hmm.